All right, we are live. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to The Good Life. My name is Paul Claiborne. I am your host tonight. And boy, do I have a show for you tonight, okay? So go ahead and go ahead and share. Share with someone, start a watch party, whatever you need to do. But this is the last show for the month of September. And this has been a September to remember. So trust me, tonight is going to be lit. So go ahead and just share. You know what time it is. It is the good life. Guys, don't forget, next month will be the uh, show's season finale, October Fest. We'll have four more terrific guests come on. And then we'll be coming back on in the month of January 21. So, guys, I love you. I'm definitely going to miss you. But stay tuned. We still got one more month to go. And for those of you who are still wanting those T-shirts with the good life, I have a different one on tonight, but Kingdom Mobile, you know, but... If you still want those, go ahead and inbox me. Tell me your size where I can ship it to, and I get it right out there to you. Go ahead and share it with somebody one more time, guys, before we go on. Thank you so much for coming on. You know how we do it. Thank y'all so much for being a part of my life. And you guys have just changed me with some of the things you have said and some of the things you have done since we have been on here the last three months. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm all fired up because I got, woo, boy. All right, guys, we got 10 more minutes. Thank y'all so much. Go ahead and like it, share it. This is going to be a terrific night. This is the night, the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to be so glad and rejoice in it, guys. So thank you. All right. One more minute. We're almost there. I wish I could sing. I'm just not anointed to do that. We are just not anointed. I'm good in the shower and by myself, but I'm not going to do it to y'all like that. Thank y'all so much. Come on in. Share, share, share. Share a light. Share with somebody tonight. It's going to be ready. It is. We are so, so excited about tonight. All right, guys. Welcome to The Good Life. I am your host, Carl Claiborne. As you know, tonight is Monday night, and man, I am so excited. You know, I know that God wants you to live your best life ever. Do you believe that God wants you to live your best life ever? So tonight, guys, you know, I just want to just want to nudge you a little bit. Sometimes we just need a nudge. And tonight I have made a new friend, and she is the pastor of Chosen Fire Ministries out in the beautiful city of Pittsburgh, and she's been doing pastoring for nine years, and I'm telling you, she is a woman after God's own heart. I'm telling you, when I connected with her on Facebook, she was a flame. She was like, I mean, she's just paving the way. So enough said, guys. I, I present to some and introduce to others, the one and only, Pastor Sam Robinson. Give it up for Pastor Sam. How you doing tonight? Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm doing, doing well. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. It's exciting to be here. I, I know it's been a long time coming. Uh, we had some mix up, but you know what? I believe this night has been ordained for you to be on, and I'm so excited for you to be on. You know, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you've been working on now. I know during the pandemic, but I've been seeing you traveling. But what are some of the other things that you're doing during this time? Um, what we're focused on this time during this um, time of pandemic, just this season, yes. uh, we're focusing on doing some COVID care. Um, it's a ministry um, that we're trying to do more outreach uh, for those, um, even doing some COVID care visits for people who can't get out, can't get to the things that they uh, need. So being able to provide those supplies, provide people with um, encouragement during this time, you know, doing some some just communicating, uh, contact, phone, uh, contact, just whichever way, um, setting up some calls. Um, that's through our COVID care ministry, through Fire Chosen Ministries. And we're actually... Um, 
also building the work through um, an organization um, which we call uh, SAMC, but it's SAMC Alliance Corps. So through that we're prevailing through partnerships. So uh, we've built some partnerships with other um, agencies, other persons um, who are interested in the development and growth of people, whether it be spiritual growth or their personal growth. Uh, we're really looking at uh, mental health during this time. Some people are having a lot of challenges just adjusting and adapting. Um, so trying to build there and actually through personal and spiritual development, we're offering uh, class through what we call thirst quenchers. Uh, so we actually have a, a oh, yeah. yeah, we're, we're doing it. I'm trying to be, you know, this is time for financial management training, educational pieces that we're doing. And we still have, um, as a, um, just part of uh, the SAMC Alliance Corps, then what we're also doing is what we call Women's Impartation Network. So right now we have clusters in Raleigh, Sanford, as well as Greensboro, uh, North Carolina, that we are, are bringing together. Right now we're doing Zoom, but this is where you know ladies are able to come and receive impartation um, and building their gifts, gifts and their self worth. So uh, we're doing a lot of things, and of course the gospel must continue to be preached. So many. Be yeah, ministering to the soul of man and not only that, but looking at um, how we can help the whole man and really be um, integrated in maturity and development during this time. I think a lot of people have realized, wait, I need to work on my relationship. Yes. With God. So um, and you don't know until the relationship is tested. So doing a lot of great things, trying to continue to uh, be an encouragement uh, to anybody we meet. You know, that's that's wonderful. And I'm so glad about, you know, that is just true ministry. And uh, that's what I've been watching. You just see you do. You just just doing a fa fa uh, fabulous job uh, tonight. Guys, you know, we're going to dive in it. You know, I, I tell you, most of the things I talk about is either I have dealt with it, overcame it, still dealing with it and just still learning how God works in this thing. Now, Let's let's be honest, you know, and this is what this show is all about. It's about authenticity and being transparent. If you want to see anybody transparent and being absolutely truthful, read the Bible. I'm telling you, they told their whole life. They put it out there so that the believer could understand, you know what? There is also someone who has struggles like you have been there, mm -hmm. done that. And you know what? They have overcame. So tonight, you know, I, I got to do this, Pastor Sam. This is something that, you know, I used to play this blame game. You know, I was stuck. I wasn't moving. Things were happening in my life. And, you know, I'll be honest, when, they, when I got saved, people told me the struggle was over. Everything was going to be fine. Honky dory. You know, all these things. And I was just waiting for these things. But nobody told me about trouble. Nobody told me that I was going to have to struggle some, that I was going to go through the fire and be made. Nobody told me anything. They just told me you're going to be blessed. Right. But what I realized was that it just wasn't people, places, and things that were in my way. The biggest problem was me. Mm. A lot of people don't want to deal with me. They don't want world war me. It's me. It's my issues. It's me, oh Lord. It is me. So when I discovered that and I started to be real and I looked in the mirror and said, you know what? I'm looking at the man in the mirror and I'm asking him to change his ways. And all of a sudden my life started to change. So guys, we want to talk to you from a, from a perspective tonight. You know, move it move it. You know, it's just time to move it. It's time for you to move. And then it's on top of that. It's time for you to start moving some things. So Pastor Sam, let, let's just get started here. I know you've been in ministry for a long time. You have seen so many different things, but uh, how can, you know, can you attest to this? Are we our worst enemy? Let's be honest. We can be. We, we can be. We can be. And I think that is uh, to some degree, uh, conditioning uh, from ex childhood experiences. Um, it can be conditioning from what we go through in life and how we either deal or heal or cope with those situations. Um, a lot of times 
we look at, you know, we look at the enemy that's on the outside, but even when there is no enemy, right? We want to uh, get to our next place, but because of whether it be outside influences or even, for example, our own self-esteem, um, it could be something that's not even having um, a, a, a good support, you know, growing up or understanding self-esteem or even coming, you know, succumbing to generational um, issues in families. Um, you know, you can hear statements like you're going to be just like your mom. You're going to be just like your dad. Or um, when when you do something well, a lot of times, I mean, you know, if you look at it, when we do something well, nobody really says anything. But if we do something negative, we do something bad, right, then everybody has something to say. So it's a continual yeah. thing that when nobody's saying anything, we will actually begin to put ourselves down. We will yeah. actually begin to criticize ourselves. So, you know, or I knew I wasn't going to make it or, it, you know, it's almost an excuse. It's almost a skate, a skate way for us to give reason or find comfort. You know, it's easier to say, well, I knew I wasn't. Or I knew I, I was not ready or I knew I couldn't make it as opposed to saying I wanted this really bad. Say you try out for basketball. I wanted this really bad. And and, you know, and I didn't make the cut. I didn't make the cut because sometimes we just don't make the cut. You don't make the cut um, instead of saying, you know, well, I, I wasn't the best player out there, but I'm still a good player. We'll say, well, all the other people were taller than me. And so that brings in a complex. Now, uh, you know, I have a uh, I'm short and that's seen as negative because it causes me to miss out on something I wanted to do. However, you know, if we can stop, you know, receiving so much of the negativity or even if it's constructive criticism to understand how to navigate through those places to where it turns out to be a positive for us. Maybe, um, you know, you know, we hear the story of like Michael Jordan. He wasn't he didn't make the cut the first time he didn't get on the basketball team, but he went back and practiced. But we have to have networks of support that we're able to build in our self-esteem and, and build in our confidence. But when you're already um, just even in our culture, you're already a people. It could be where you're from. Um, it could be you. Maybe you're on the wrong side of the tracks. Maybe you're not born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Um, maybe you're not born uh, with everything you want at your command or anything like that. But in the same essence, if you don't have everything, that doesn't mean that something's wrong with you. And it mm. takes us a while to realize that because we as people, you know, we're we're visionary, you know, we're we're sensitive um, with what we see, how we feel, uh, what, you know, smell, taste, touch, all of those things. Um, if we see it, we want it, but we can't access it mm -hmm. or we don't have the ability to reach it. So then we internalize that to try to reason within ourselves because everybody wants to understand why things are the way they are. And some things you just don't understand. But if we um, when we find ourselves not giving way to the negative aspect so much as we do the positive. So we can be our own worst enemy when I don't need you to um, disrespect me or or down me when I'm doing it myself. I don't need mm -hmm. an enemy. You know, it's almost like, with, you know, we hear the saying with friends like that, who needs enemies? Well, yeah. if I'm the one criticizing, if I'm the one internalizing all of this negativity about myself, who else is going to believe in me? Who yeah. else is going to believe in you? So then we, the enemy doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't yeah. have to do anything but put a place of doubt, put a place of low self-esteem, put a, you know, or feel it inadequate. Wow. Maybe, maybe I'm not enough and learning that we are enough, learning that what we have and who we are is enough. Simply, you know, our purpose, the fact that we're born, the, that we're here says that God wants us here. And so we can become our own worst enemy when we fail to realize there's so much greater outside of us than what we feel inside of us. And even not knowing um, it can be just uh, ignorance. Um, not knowing how to apply principles of encouragement in our own life, how to encourage ourselves when nobody else believes in you, as opposed to going with the flow uh, or going with the norm of, yes, I know this is my family. I know we have a history. I know now yeah, I, I can't hear nobody talk back, but but I know there are some, know. We have some family history and, and we have tendencies. Right. And there are already issues in our family. But mm -hmm. if we look at that and say, OK, mm -hmm. I realize what I'm up against. 
It mm -hmm. may be challenging, but that doesn't mean that I have to go that way. So yeah. I become my own worst enemy when I say, um, I'm just going to follow. I, I'm going to be like this. I'm going to do this. Did my family always been this way? But what if you're the one to change the trajectory for the entire family? Preach. That's good stuff. So we, we can become our own worst enemy. Um, and, and, and sadly enough, we may not have enough people in our lives from from whether it be a young age or to find us at those you know adolescent ages to make impact of influence. Um, we may not have those people in our lives who will have the influence or impact to change that, to, to allow us to realize you don't have to be your own enemy. We have enough, we have enough against us. I don't know about you. I have enough against me instead of me joining the bandwagon. I need to be for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's so true. I mean, if we're not for ourselves, I mean, I mean, when you turn against you, good gracious, you know, it's like you said, we have enough outside uh, sources, Pastor. That I mean, I can't afford to jump in the bandwagon with them. I got to be for me. If right. God is for me, I definitely got to be for me too. So, you know, I was listening to you and I, and I was there. This You were talking about that basketball. I, I remember in high school, I went out for it. Everybody said, man, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. And I remember when they put that list in the hall and all the guys were crowded, crowded around the, the, you know, the list and they were jumping. I made it. And I remember I walked up to it and I went all the way down. And I was like, then I went all the way down again. And I said, oh my God. But when I turned around, I was crushed. I felt like it was the end of the world. I mean, how, how many times have, have, you know, that people out there when, like you said, don't make the cut, you, you, you start measuring yourself, mm -hmm. you know, saying I'm not good enough by someone else's standard. Now, you know, and all of a sudden I just said, you know what, basketball just isn't my thing. You know, and I and I did something else, but you know, how how important is it that we believe what God says about us instead of what man says? It's extremely important um, that we believe what God says. Um, the challenge in believing what God says is for us to begin to learn what He's saying. Um, I wasn't raised in the church, so under knowing what God is saying. Uh, mm -hmm was foreign to me. I didn't even know God was speaking. I didn't know there was a God in a sense. I heard people say God, but that meant nothing yeah. to me. I just thought that's how you talk. And um, it's so important simply because he, he when, when God speaks, his words are life. It's filled with love. Mm -hmm. And if you're not exposed to love and life, then how can you uh, expect the light to shine in a dark world? And, and it may be only you in your own personal bubble with whatever you're going through. And so um, that is why, you know, we must continue to continue to share the message that God sends because not enough people know what God says about them. And even, oh God, help us. Those who are sitting right in the house, they only know what pastor said, but they have yet to understand what God has said if you never open the book. So if pastor doesn't give you the full book, some may never open it. Some may never understand. Ooh. So yeah. With that, we have to know what he's saying because that's where our purpose lies. That's where the whole uh, fact of us being created. That's what. That's why we're here, and yeah. because we're spoken on the word. He knew us before he formed us, but he already had us in mind. He had a, a development. He had a plan before he formed us. So, and it's with that he spoke. Sam's gonna be born on May twenty whatever year. Blah blah blah. You know yeah. what I mean. And so he speaks that um, and he says, I, I want you to come forward at this time for this purpose. And yet we don't know what he's saying. And so it's for us to understand that mm -hmm. God alone, the, the God alone, when God, if you're by yourself. Mm, OK, I, I'm trying to be cool yeah. on this thing, right? No, you, you don't need to. I know, right? If you're by yourself and all you have and the only person you have is God with you, then you're with the majority. You wow. everybody else can walk away and they I can leave and they can forget you. But with God, you're with the majority because he's the same one who speaks and everything is created. He's the same one who speaks and things shift. And so why wouldn't we want his word cannot even fail if, if his word 
It can't even fail. The whole earth and heaven, heaven and earth is going to pass away before one jot or tittle of his word will fail. And so that's why it's so important to understand what God is saying about us in spite of everything else. And, and what I love about it, his word, um, Lord, his word supersedes what we have said about ourselves. Preach. I love it. Yes. His word supersedes. You can believe that you're nothing. But when God says, I called you this, you're my child. You're the apple of my eye. You're more than a conqueror. If we would believe in that, as opposed to, like you said, that's where we become our own worst enemy yet again, when we yes. don't and we don't believe because God is saying, I'm calling you out. I'm mm -hmm. calling you forward. And because we say, nah, I can't do that. Or I don't want to do that. Or it's uh, like I said to you, it may be out of our comfort zone, but that doesn't mean that God hasn't called you to that place. That Come doesn't on. mean that God hasn't assigned you. That doesn't mean that God still hasn't spoken great things for Carl Claiborne and Lady Claiborne. That doesn't mean that he hasn't spoken a world of wonders. And just like the rain and the snowfall, just like that, it's not coming back to him void. So if he mm -hmm. has to shift heaven and earth, He'll do it just so his word can come to pass in your life. And yeah. so we would be in, in agreement, right? If we could get in agreement with God. Nah. Walk in the in the majority. In and I might not even know what he's gonna do, but the fact that I'm in agreement, mm -hmm. that's that's where the doctor gives you a report and God gives you a report of healing. The doctor yeah. says, you're sick. You have six months to live. Or if that's the uh, diagnosis or prognosis and God says, I, I'm listen with my stripes, you are healed. Mm -hmm. And so whose report are we going to believe? Oh, that's good stuff. And so when we build in that and that's the, and see, you have to know his will. His word is his will. What he's saying is his will. And he doesn't stop speaking. Sometimes we just aren't in a place to hear. We're not postured. We're not open. And so when we open up, Carlin, and just let God speak and really receive what he's saying. Oh, uh, yes. I've never heard him say anything for my detriment. Even a caution, even a rebuke is for our good. It's done Ooh. in love. Yes. Every word is for us to live, move and have our being in him. Every word is for us to feel, fulfill purpose. Every yes. word. So, so you ask me, is it important? It's so important. Without his word, what life do we have? And and, and the truth is, if I look back, oh, Lord, talk about it. Testimony. <laughs> If you look back, what life do we have? We have a life. And, you know, I, I can say, well, I didn't think it was full of sorrow and all this. But I knew I know now which direction I was going in. Yes. I know it was a backwards direction. I know I was on the path to hell. I know that I was in the opposite direction of who God made me to be. So you ask yourself, I was born on this earth. I was born into this earth, put here for purpose. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows the plan but God. Oh, wow. Yes. So we're talking to everybody, listening to everybody. We know every word to the songs. We know every word somebody said. We can, we know Ooh. what she said, she said. But when we understand what God has said about us, what he's saying to us and what he's continually speaking, you don't even, his word is so important. He'll talk to somebody else about you and you don't yeah. even have to be included in the conversation. Mm, that's good. So uh, it's, it's extremely important. And, and for that, we have to be in a place of hearing to hear what he's saying. Yeah. You know something, uh, kind of, I want to just kind of piggyback off that you were saying, you know, who we listen to. I remember one day, um, I think I was in 11th, 12th grade in high school. I straggled into the guidance council's office. Mm -hmm. I, I really didn't have no purpose. I was just going in there, just, you know, just trying to get away, trying to cut class, whatever. And, uh, and I just asked her, you know, I said, you know, you know, I want to do something with my life. What can I be? And she just looked at me and was like, you know what? I think technical school or some type of trade, you know, maybe a welder or electrician or something like that. And I was like, OK, but here I was, you know, and I thought about that years later, you know, God bless her heart. I allowed someone I sit in someone's office and almost let them define my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I let them tell me, not knowing what was in me, 
Because God said, you know, like you said in the word, God created us in his image. You know, he called us like he told Jeremiah. And, and here I am, I'm allowing someone to tell me, pretty much I gave her a blank check to tell me what my life was going to be like. So I, I want to ask people, how many dream killers do you have, I mean, that are writing the chapters to your life? I mean, they don't just took the pen out of your hand and now they're writing chapter by chapter and you're believing what they're saying. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean Pastor, how important is my circle when I'm growing and maturing in Christ? How important do I need to move? So, like, come on, let's just have it. Maybe I need to move some people so that the right people can come and I can really start making some progress here. Right, right. Circle, uh, the circle is so, in, it, it is, that is an extraordinary place. Because um, when you look at your circle uh, to be in, when you look at your circle to be in, uh, the circle is just not people around you, but the circle also becomes the hedge. Ooh. Circle becomes the hedge. Yeah. Circle becomes the place of protection so that you can grow, so that you can live. Because with the wrong people in your circle, right, with the wrong people in your hedge, then you could conceivably die. You could be uncovered too soon. We could be uncovered too soon and then be destroyed because the hedge that we had, the one that we had, we thought couldn't protect us or wasn't there to cover us in our moments of vulnerability. Right. We're vulnerable. You walk into the guidance office. You're expecting guidance. You're expecting somebody to cover you. Instead, they impose their own thoughts their own assumptions. They don't know where you come from, don't know what's happening at home, don't know what's being built in you, don't know um, the kind of ingenuity that you may have yeah. inside of you. And so then, um, and we trust these persons because they're in places of position and title, um, whatever area it may be. Mm -hmm. Because the guy is counselor, you're supposed to guide and guide me and counsel me. How, however, that may not be the part of the hedge that we need at that time. Exactly. Um, so your experience is, is slightly different from mine. I had a librarian who's a wonderful woman of God, even now, Reverend Sherry Gray. And um, I, I was in the library because I had that's where I just went on my break. And um, when I had low self-esteem and I was struggling and was yeah. with um, uh, adolescent, uh, just on the borderline of being a delinquent and just 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 could go either way. This woman. And, and I, I didn't know, but she was just so kind, but she began to build in me. So the library became a sanctuary for me. Oh, um, and she provided. Isn't she, that good? Oh, please say that one more time. I'm so sorry. Please say that one more time. Because I think people need, I didn't mean to do that. I know yeah. that, that just hit me. You said the library became a sanctuary. Yes, yes. That shook me. Yes. Okay, well, stay in the chair, stay in the chair. <laughs> I'm trying. But here's the thing. It was at a place where I was lost yeah. when I was, you know, having suicidal thoughts, writing them down in my diary. And and I found sanctuary in the library. And it was the librarian. It was a safe space. And so when you talk about your circle, that's when I understood. There are some people in your life who believe in you more than you believe in yourself. Absolutely. Um, they want it more because they can see uh, uh, they have vision and, and they have insight and they're able to build in us. So then you, you have to find when you talk about the circle, you should be safe in your circle. The circle. And so sometimes we, we look at the circle and if you're in a circle full of vipers. Hey, God, oh, in a circle where it's it's normal people get excited to put you down they like to see you doing bad then that's the wrong circle if you're in a circle uh even in the midst of where we are we should be able to have somebody that can pull us up cause us to grow we should be able to have somebody who we can pull up we should be able to have somebody who's on our level that we can walk with together mm. And a lot of times we don't know how to build the hedge. We don't know how to build the circle until it's too late. Until, you know, when you're in the circle or uh, you need to hide in the hedge when the, when the enemy comes, when the wolves come and you realize, wait a minute, you're a wolf. Wait a minute, you're a snake. 
So you don't yeah. have to run from them because they're already there. So the circle yeah. is so important because the circle is um, is what God even allows for us in development. Mm -hmm. um, so that we might know the things that we need so that we might know the the places that we can go so that we might know so like you said um you were immediately defined by somebody who who didn't have the full plan yes um, and Absolutely. whether we know it or not everybody doesn't have that vision or insight to look at us and speak to our life and open up doors with their words mm -hmm. So that we and doors in our heart and doors in our mind and doors of where we can go. And so sometimes and you got to realize um, it can be simple things that happen that let you know you're not in a hedge. You're in a hurtful place that let yeah. you know the circle is not my support. Mm -hmm. So if the circle is not supporting you, if when you run into the circle, right, uh, because that's supposed to be your safe place and you should be able to to be vulnerable in the circle. But if every time you're uncovered, they use it for a time to to hurt you. They use it for a time to inflict pain or remind you the last time you showed up. Uh, yes. remind you. Listen, that's not the right circle you need. Uh, and, and so and if you don't know how to find that circle, ask God, pray, send me the people I need around me. That's going to help me reach my destiny so that I can help somebody else. And yes. a lot of times we might be the problem in the circle. Mm. Right? Well, uh, so if your circle have a bunch of drama and the drama always start when you show up, when we show up, then we got to realize, wait, 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 something's wrong. Maybe it's unhealthy yes. to be in this manner. Maybe. Th and that could be some of the things, you know, the, the doubt and or if we're just feeding off of one another. Listen, I don't want to be in a circle. If, OK, I understand we might have the same issues, but if you're not trying to get help and I'm not trying to get help then that's wrong that I, I we need to be in a circle that's going to help us to at least say you know what i was in a place where you were i've been there before yes and i i i can tell you there even if they don't know the way through even if they don't know how to get your get you out of your situation necessarily but to be an encouragement to say i know you can come out mm. as opposed to try to keep you you want it to be a hedge of protection not a hedge of imprisonment imprisonment <sighs> Yeah, that's good. So you know, I, I was I was listening to that. I mean, what you were saying as far as that edge. Um, I was jotting some down. I said everybody was speaking. I was allowing everybody to speak over my life, but me. Yes. Oh. And I and it, it it dawned on me when when I came to the scripture about when Jesus was telling the disciples, he was just telling them, Verily I say unto you that whatsoever you say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast in the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. You should have whatever you said in whatsoever you say. So just paraphrasing that, you know, I was allowing everybody else to speak, but I wasn't speaking. And that's why this big stuff was still in my life. That's why the mountains were still there. That's why drama was still there. But when all of a sudden I started to open my mouth, stuff started to scatter. How important is it to speak to our situations? And matter of fact, it's, you know, God even put Abraham in a position where he had to speak to Lot. He told Lot, you know what? We, it's too much confusion. If you take the left, I'm going to the right. How important is it for us to not be afraid to confront some people that it's time to go? Oh, you talking to the right one? <laughs> Listen, it's so important. Um, okay, so you said it initially. You said uh, this for even a thought tonight to move it. Yes. Right? So if your words have the power of death and life, and we don't speak, because here's the thing: everybody can speak about you, but the one that has the authority is. God, and then he gives you the authority to speak into your own life. Even being created in his image, we have the creativity. You can speak your own destiny. And when you speak, so the challenge is we have to believe what we're speaking. And that's why. So initially we started out, it's so much power in what we're speaking. We believe it. 
because it's coming from a thought, a place of our thought, a place of our emotion. So it's coming from somewhere. Yes, Miss Gloria. Hallelujah. She said, decree a thing and it shall. The Bible says that we shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Yeah. So when we are speaking it and we're speaking it. We're giving it. We're adding to our faith. So it's the power even in our faith, like you said, to speak to the mountain and the mountain. Will, listen, we don't even have to do anything to the mountain. The mountain, the Bible says it'll pick itself up. And, it'll move. and so sometimes when people understand I'm talking to you and I'm telling you, I ain't got to be rude. I don't have to disrespect you, but th I've had enough. We've got to speak. I can open my mouth. And when you've had enough, Fannie Lou Hamer said, listen, when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you yeah. get to that place because in the, in the thought process of that place, it does something in your heart. And when you get tired of it, you'll start speaking to it. That's how mm -hmm. you know people uh, aren't tired enough yet. <laughs> That's Ooh. how you know that you're willing to, and maybe because they don't know how, okay, fine. Well, then somebody is in your life that teaches you how to speak to things, whether it be negative or positive. We've all learned that. We've all learned, oh Lord, y'all know some of the words that we used to say. Y'all know some of the stuff we used to say, and, and we spoke it and we meant it. And we didn't have to tell anybody that we mean it because they knew it from the from the tone, from the heart, from what we said. And it was so powerful. And we missed the part. We missed the part that the authority was there. So sometimes you have to speak and say, you know what? This is just not good for me. It's not good for you. This, this is over. It's done. Or even get to the place to talk to yourself. Mm -hmm. To give yourself some understanding through the word, through encouragement to say, you know what? This is not the will of God for my life. Uh, it is not this drama, it is not the will of God for my life. And I refuse to participate any longer. Come on. I refuse. So when they call you, they want to gossip. You know what? I really don't have time for this. This is not what I need to be using my mouth to speak. This is, I need to be using my mouth to speak positive things. Yeah, I can pray for them. I'm not finna talk about them because the truth be told, somebody sitting somewhere talking about you, talking about me, if it's nobody but the accuser of the brethren. And so we have to realize that we are stewards over our words and we have to be mindful. It, one word out of your mouth can make or break somebody else's life. One word out of your mouth can make or break your own life. One word out of your mouth can cause death and it can cause life. It can cause somebody to believe or somebody to doubt. That's why we can't have two faces. That's why we can't speak with two tongues. That's why we got to be who we are, act who we are, say who we are and walk in that. And it's all because of a thought, a decision. I'm going to believe this and I'm going to speak this. Uh, right. There's a thought that says, you know, I, I see something different and I choose to go against it. I, I'm expecting it. I'm claiming it. This yeah. week is going to be miracles. And guess what? We see miracles every day when you wake up and we miss it. When you Missed open your eyes and you can see every breath is a miracle. And so I'm in a place now. You talk about what we're speaking. I have to watch my words. Yes. So it's so important because if we don't watch our words, then our words, oh God, listen now, we're created in the image of God. Yeah. So what did God do? God spoke everything. Oh God. He spoke. There was nothing. He spoke to the, it, the earth was null and void. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Mm -hmm. There was nothing. And God spoke everything. And so here we are in his image, mm -hmm. in his likeness, being like him. And we won't say nothing and we won't speak to the situation and we have the ability to change it. Mm -hmm. We have the ability to shape our atmosphere, to shape our destiny, to shape. Oh, Lord, we even our circle. Yes. You know, you so. me. You, and see, y'all, I know folks don't want to say this. They want you, you know, to even acknowledge this person has not been a good friend to me. I need to release them. I thought they what? were friends. Mm. You know, and you can say, I love you, but I, we, we can't be friends no more. This is not yeah. a friend. But see, people are scared of, of the, or I ain't gonna, well, some people are scared, number one. Yeah. But some people don't know how to communicate effectively. See, so we don't know what to speak, how to speak, when, even when. 
Mm. You know, things happen. We can see things go uh, detrimentally wrong. And because we don't know, we, we know things are going wrong. We don't know what to say. Yeah. Um, and some things wouldn't happen if, if people know you're going to speak up. Mm -hmm. That is why we have a lot of the travesties that have happened in our life, in our families, in our communities, because nobody wouldn't say nothing. Oh, wow. Or even when they said something, we weren't sure. And so there was a lack of confidence in it. Mm -hmm. uh, what what goes on in our house stays in our house. You better not open your mouth. Don't say nothing about this. And and so we go right outside the house. We see help right outside the house. We see we have access and we won't open our mouths. Wow. And some people have lived years of, of abuse and years of, of challenges or tragedies that nobody said anything. Everybody shot. Nobody said yeah. anything. Yeah, and it was happening the whole time, and even the ones who knew it was happening wouldn't say anything. God, this mm -hmm. is for somebody, and, and and they wouldn't say anything. And now that God has has helped us and helped mm -hmm. you and helped myself find our voice, yes, right, find not just any voice, because some people just say what everybody else say. Yeah, we know we know what's the Ooh. word street we know what to say some people are just saying what everybody else says and, yeah. and so and so we but we have to find the voice that god has given us mm. we have yeah. to find the voice so if i don't talk just like you because i'm from chatham county it'll be all right because yeah. i'm gonna speak exactly what god is putting in me to say and he didn't do that so even understanding it's important for us to speak yes because in the likeness of God, we are we are creatures who have been created to communicate in some form of fashion. If I have to write yeah. you a uh, listen, if it's a dear John letter, you're getting a message. <laughs> <laughs> dear John, you get yes. You know, come on. If you have to write a note, you know they say write a note to your enemy. Yeah. Tell them, thank you. What you do? Well, write the note and and tell them what they done, and then forgive them and release them to God. Hey, yeah. release them to God and let God have His way and speak that you're gonna. You know what? This hurt me. I went through this, but I am gonna live a full life. I'm uh -huh. going to live the life God, you are going to live the life that God called you to. You mm -hmm. are going to be exactly who God wants you to be. And, and if it means we have to go separate ways, listen, Abraham said a lot. And see what I love about Abraham. Oh, you see, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that, Carl. But listen, what I love about Abraham, <laughs> what he really was saying was a lot. Listen, I love you. And no matter which way we go, I'm still going to love you. But he was also saying, no matter which way we go, God's going to be with me. Ah, I don't want to believe that because Abraham already understood God's going to bless me. He's going to anoint my seed. They're going to be as the sand. They're going to be as the stars. And what we cannot have is interruption and interjection. And what we cannot have is distractions to what God is doing. So if you are distracted, your shepherds fighting with my shepherds, your fieldsmen fighting with my, your animals, we're getting them all confused. Take your sheep over there. I'm going to take my sheep right here and eat. Either way it goes, God's going to bless me. Mm. Because oh, when I left, when he left Chaldean, when he left the, the land of Chaldea, God had already said, I'm calling you to a place you don't know, but I'm going to bless you. I just need you to follow. And so Abraham was speaking, listen, Lot. And, and so sometimes, you know, he spoke too soon. He said, Lot, come on with me. And see, we can't take everybody with us. Oh, you can, oh that was good. Everybody. Oh, wait, no, man. We have to understand that. And when we and when we don't understand that, we we will soon. Oh, Lord, I have too many people. It's like telling everybody be ready at four o'clock and you have spoken to everybody. And you only have you have a two seater car. Now you got five people standing outside waiting on you. Uh, uh, Somebody can go. Somebody you know can go. Hey, we'll try to jump in and sit on top of each other and everything, get in the trunk. You know how we do. But at the same time, somebody has to be willing to speak up to say this is not going to work. Yes. And then somebody also has to be able to speak up like Abraham was doing and say, listen, this will work if you go there and I go here. 
because now I have to realize my destiny is in the hands of God and I got to follow him and I cannot allow or not even cannot, but I will not. Mm-hmm. I will not allow Lot and all of his. Oh, God spoke to me some years ago and he said, it does not take a lot. See, we oh. think it takes Ooh. a lot for us to be blessed, but God, that is not what God said to him. It does not take a lot for us to walk in what God called us to. So you, like I said, you may not have a whole bunch of material things. You may not have everything you think or I think that we need, but it does not take a lot. We think we got to bring lot alone. We got, we think we have to bring a lot with us, but guess what? If we don't have a lot, God still with us and he spoke it. And so all we have to do is keep speaking. Even nonprofit um, organizations, when they talk to you and when they train you, they tell you uh, when you go through their trainers, keep telling your story, Ooh. keep speaking your story. Keep Mm. speaking your faith. Keep speaking what you're called to do. Keep speaking what this organization is about. Because as long as you keep speaking it, every you can have a thousand people who hear it and ignore. But you just need one person. One. You just need one person to hear what you are saying. That God can anoint their ears and tug at their heart to be a blessing to your organization. So uh, when we want to stop speaking. We still have to find the words to keep believing, to keep speaking, to yeah. keep looking at the mountain and as big as ever. Come on. And, yeah. still, and it's bigger than you. You said a mountain. God said a mountain. Yeah. He didn't say, look at the little mole here. Look at the ant here. He said, if you speak to the mountain, this is the kind of faith. And it ain't even that much faith that you have to have. Yeah. So if we, Lord have mercy now, don't, you can stop me anytime, but if we aren't willing, if we aren't willing to speak to it, who else is going to speak for us? Nobody. You get we it. We find ourselves in cultures, in a culture where they'll speak, they'll speak for you without knowing you or understanding you. Mm. And then what they're speaking has nothing to do with you. Wow. It has nothing to do with your progress or your development. This is just what they want to impose. And they can be whomever. It can be school systems, governments, whatever. It could be whomever. It could be your friends that aren't good friends. They'll speak for you. Yeah, she going. She'll Mm -hmm. be there. Or they'll say, well, don't you agree? No, I don't agree. Speak for yourself. (laughs) And you know, that's the problem I had. You got it. Oh, man. You know, that when I was coming up, that's a problem I had. You know, I remember, you know, going to get my big brother. Please win this fight for me. And I remember one day he pushed me back outside. He said, you're going to take care of this yourself. And and I realized even growing up, I, I had these self-esteem issues, man. I mean, just just, you know, agreeing with everything, laughing at everything, you know, getting with everybody, just wanting to be liked so much. Because I didn't want to be alone, you know, and I was just fighting to be in these groups and cliques and camps. I mean, just fighting. But I realized I was fighting for nothing. That sometimes God sets you apart for a reason. You know, he doesn't want you hearing everything that's out there, everything because it distorts your vision. And some people wondering why they're just feeling so scattered is because they're listening to scattered people. Right. You know, so what I had to do, Pastor, I had to change my company, change my vocabulary because I couldn't walk around saying, you know what, I'm scared. Right. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but power, love, and the sound mind. That's what his word says. So how important is it for us not be walking around talking about I'm broke? You know, yeah, you may not have no money, but your mind has to change. So a changed mind creates a changed life. How important is it why Paul said to renew your mind? Pastor, oh, she frozen. Pastor Sam, can everybody else hear me? Let me know and say yes. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? Let me know if y'all can have an isolate. Can y'all hear me? Y'all 
Y'all can hear me? Okay. Pastor Sam may be frozen. But what she was saying is, guys, you can hear. All right. Thank y'all. You can hear. Yes, yes. Pastor Sam may be. I think she may be frozen, but that's okay. She'll be back. But guys, I'm, I'm telling you, that's what we got to do. We got to keep speaking positive stuff over our life. You, you, there's life in your mouth. You know, you can say, you can create your own world by what you say. So if, 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 if you think you're broke and you keep saying that, that's exactly what's going to happen to your life. You got to keep telling yourself the truth about you. Keep speaking the truth about yourself, guys. So listen, my next question was, and she's going to pop back, but uh, why do we settle for God's, for, why do we settle for less than God's best? Well, I mean, why do we settle, folks? I mean, when God wants to give us everything in the kingdom, why do we as a people settle for less? I mean, is it because we don't think we deserve better because of where we come from? Or, or is it that we don't think that, you know, because we have messed up so bad, we don't deserve it? You know, I don't deserve a good job because, you know, I, I did this in my past. You know, I don't deserve a good relationship because I was divorced one time. You know, we, 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 we put these labels on ourselves. You know, we start judging ourselves and God is telling us we are more than what we think we are. So isn't it time that you start speaking truth over your life, guys? Isn't it time that you start really telling yourself who you really are? So who are you? Who are you? I mean, who are you? Aren't you better than the life you're living in? That's what, I, you know, I, I had to start moving this negativity out of my life because all I could see was my past. All I could see was what I had did, done, been there, and all of that. That's all I could see. But isn't it time that you start seeing the real you? The person who God wants, God wants to use in a mighty way, you know. So, guys, it's time to move all the chatter out of your head. It's time to start moving jealousy. It's time to start moving fear. It's time to start moving all these limitations that you have put on yourself. And God is, He wants you to have more. He wants you to have more because you are more. You are more than a conqueror. You know, you are more than you could ever imagine. But you got to start learning to move some of this stuff out of your life that's keeping you stagnated. You know, so what's keeping you stagnated? I mean, you know, it, is it the life you used to live and you think you're still that? You need to move it. You know, is it because... You know, you don't have the job you want right now. You think this is all you deserve. You need to move that. Is it because you're living in a one-bedroom apartment right now and you don't think that you deserve to have a 5,000-square-foot house? Do you think that? You need to move it. You need to move all this stuff out of your head that's keeping you from moving forward. Oh, man. Oh, how many years have I wasted? because of what was in my head. You know, the, all the limitations that I, I can't do this, you know, because I don't have enough education. You know, I can't speak in front of all these people because, you know, I didn't go to college, but let me tell you something. When God anoints you and he calls you, you have everything you need to make it. I think I'll say that one more time. I hear Jeremiah saying, you know what? But Lord, I'm so young. I don't even know what to say, but God says, open your mouth, and I have put the words in your mouth. I'm here to tell you guys, God has a plan for you, and he has already anointed you. He has already appointed you, and for the people and your naysayers that's trying to tell you you don't qualify, tell them. God blesses the unqualified. I'm so glad I was unqualified by man, but qualified by God. Because when man gives you something, you know what? He can take it back. But when God gives you something, it is yours for the taking, baby. I'm here to tell you. So you know what? You've got to keep living. 
You got to keep being the person who God called you to be, and you got to want God's best. So watch this here. My next question was, what does it mean to get out of your own way? What does that mean? That means that you're going to have to stop being your worst enemy. You're going to have to learn to start changing the way you speak to yourself. I mean change. You're going to have to learn to change the friends you hang around. You're going to have to learn, you know, to change the way you see life. I mean, how do you really see it? Do you see the glass empty or do you see it full? I mean, just because your life is where it is doesn't mean you're going to be here all the time. But you have to learn to see vision. How many visionaries do I have on the call tonight? Say, you know what? I see, I've I got x ray vision, man. I see something that's bigger than me, that's oversized in my life, and God is going to use me to get there. How many people? I mean, how many of you on here? I mean, you got to have a vision for your life. I mean, you got to remove all this negativity from out of your life, and you got to learn to be everything that God called you to be. So here it is. A changed mind will produce a changed life. The only way I became better is I had to change my mind. I had to tell the devil I changed my mind. I, I can't stay, you know, in living in this type of life and thinking this way. You know, I, yeah, let people tell you or let people say to you, who do you think you are? You know, I got that. When, when Time you want to better yourself, people are going to question you. Who do you think you are? You let them know. I am who I am by the grace of God. I am better. I am better than I was. I may not have all what I used to have or what I want right now, but I'm sure not what I used to be. You have to be gutsy enough to let people know that you're about to bust the move. I'm here to tell you, you've got to let people know, man, you've got to man up and boss up and let people know, you know what? I'm better than this. That's right. See, people don't care if you stay right where they are. Oh, I've been there. You know, uh, man, they just is comfortable because, you know, you're there right with them. But time you start growing. And start, it's time you start being leveling up in your life. People got something to say. Time you start doing your ministry. Now people got something to say. Time you start making the money that you deserve. Now, I mean, why you got something to say now? You know, people will, will, will love you and leave you at the same time. But I'm here to tell you, love and leave me, but I'm going to do the will of God. I'm going to level up. I'm going to be everything that God has called me to be. You know what, guys? It's time for you to boss up. It's time for you to become the person God said you could become. It's time for you to stop dimming your lights. How many times, if you got people in your life that you got to dim your lights to be around them, man, you in the wrong, you in the, you at the wrong table. If I have to dim my lights to make you feel good, to make you comfortable, I'm at the wrong table. I need to be at a table where I, I, I'm afraid to pick up the right, the wrong knife. I need to be at a table that challenges me so bad that I want to come up and be everything God called me to be. Why should I be in a room where I have to dim my lights? I mean, why should I have to make you comfortable when God is maturing me? So, guys, you got to get out of those rooms. It's time for you to boss up. It's time for you to level up, and it's time for you to start moving some of this mess out of your way. I'm telling you, mess, I'm telling you, in drama, I'm, you, you can't afford it no more. Time is ticking, and it's time for you to make your move, and it's time for you to become everything that God called you to be. Well, guys, listen, it's 9 o'clock. I, I had one more question for you, though. Why do you feel, do you think that purpose is easy. You know, I thought when I when I got saved and I started going, coming to church, people told me everything would be okay. But I realized that 
the way God has challenged me through the good, bad, and ugly made me a better person today. So why do you feel that the road is all, why do you, we want to always take the easy road? You know, the, the, the path of, of least resistance. You know, guys, the only way that you can truly become everything God told you to be is that you will be challenged. You know, being fire tested and being pressure tested is the only way to really define who you are. You know, I, when I started getting pressed and I started to get entangled in, in with some serious stuff, it's the day I found out who God was in my life. And it was the day I started to really dig into God's word and I started to discover who I truly was. You know, so if you want to, if you really want to find out who you are, you got to start looking in the manual. You got to start. I was calling people. Who am I? Who the, you know, you, you, they don't know who you are. Some people can't even define themselves better yet how they're going to define you. So you got to get around some people. They may not have nothing, but you know what? They're going to push you up. You know, I had to get around those type of people who who believed in me, who believed in my dream. And I had to let these dream killers go, guys. So tonight, it's time for you to move. It's time for you to make up in your mind that, you know what, I've taken you as far as I can take you. You know what, I have put up with you as long as I have, and I can't take it no more. You know what? I have dealt with your drama long enough. It's time for me to do something different. And you cannot put new wine in old wine skins. You know, in, in other words, guys, you can't keep hanging around old stuff and expecting God to send you new stuff. It just won't work. So you got to depart from it. You, you know, you, you, you got to learn to, you don't need nobody to define you. I hear you. You know, you don't need nobody to define you. God already defined you before the beginning of the world. He called you by name. You know, it, 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 it had nothing to do with your mother or father. They were just catalysts to help get you here. But God knows you. He knows your down, he knows your down setting. He knows your uprising. The Bible says he knows the numbers of your hair. Every bit of it, guys. He knows you. He knows you better than anyone does. So, guys, it's time to remove yourself from certain situations. It's time for you to rise to the occasion. And I believe that when this show is over, and I believe when it's all been said and done, everybody on this call is going to be walking in their divine purpose. Oh, yes. I can see the day when you be operating in the gifts and callings that God has for you. I see the day and I believe the day when you are going to make the money you deserve. You're going to be in relationships that you deserve to be in. You know what, guys? I mean, just like Pastor Sam was saying, some stuff you just don't, you know, it just doesn't suit you anymore. Have you ever felt frustrated? It's because you're entangled with these these chaotic people and these small-minded people that you're frustrated because you're changed. You have changed so much and you're trying to fit in with people who can't get in with you. You're trying to make yourself and force yourself to fit in with people who you have just outgrown. I just had to realize that I was trying to make myself be in situations that I had all grew. Uh oh, here she goes. You back? I am back. I think there's a wreck or something, and uh, I don't know. Everybody's power is gone, but I'm here. You back? You got your yeah, power I'm back? back? No, I'm here. We we I'm doing well. We we good. We good. Well, Sometimes you know we natural That's power. Good. I ain't going nowhere. I'm glad I stayed on and I just kept talking, saying what Pastor Sam said. So Pastor Sam, we were talking about, you know, it's just time to move it. And I was just yeah. sharing with the people, I know that God put us here for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, 
you may be called out of your name, you may be looked at funny, but what's more, what's more important, pleasing God or pleasing man? I mean, let's think about that because I was a people pleaser. I wanted everybody to be happy. But you know what? At the end of the day, I was the only one that was unhappy. So how do we get out of this mindset of thinking, I got to please everybody? Come on, help me out tonight. Well, when you realize pleasing people don't pay your bills, right? Mm -hmm. That'll help you. Uh, when you realize pleasing people don't pay your bills. But then um, also realizing that it's going to be... Listen, the flesh is insatiable, right? And so when you think about um, being able to please someone, it doesn't matter what you do. You could you could move the mountains, you could send a wave in the ocean, but at the same time, people are hard to please. It doesn't matter how much you do, they may never be satisfied. And so when you realize you can get to the end of yourself trying to please somebody else, and then there's no more you, you're empty, you're gone, you've lost your total self trying to please somebody. And so what that does is put you in a place of um, continuously failure. Wow. Continually failing. And and so um, it takes a while if that's, if that's the nature. Now, um, some of us, have always sort of been the ones that you know won't do what everybody else thinks, and I think we have to look at the the uh, the motives that we want to please people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we want to please our parents, we want to please our friends, yeah. we, you know, you because most of it is to be generally accepted, right? But when it change, when the motives change, when the motives shift to a place where um, pleasing them becomes like almost a self-gratifying thing. Um, it's it's not going to happen because after a while, you still haven't pleased yourself. Mm. So some people like, I just like seeing everybody happy. But at some point, you're going to want to be happy. Yes. At some point, you're going to want to have that your own personal satisfaction. And when you realize I can't do that because I'm so busy worried about what everybody else thinks. And at the end of the day, it's not going to matter. And so what I learned um, and am learning and continue to learn is that when I stand before God, whether they're pleased isn't going to matter. Yes. It, it's, it's not going to be, uh, well, you know, such and such was happy with me and they enjoyed this and I, I did this well for them. But is God pleased? Mm -hmm. wow. You know, you know, you got to be concerned with those with the one who can, do, you know, handles your soul pretty much. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that means we're not going to please everybody and coming to the understanding that that may be that's OK. It's OK not to please everybody. Uh, if you're doing a walking, if we are walking in our purpose, we're not going to please everybody. <laughs> part of that. So you were talking about um, the mindset and part of that is to understand I'm not here for everybody. As a pastor, I know I'm not called to everybody. Amen. Everybody's not going to hear me. And even God says, my sheep know my voice. A stranger, they're not going to follow. If, if, you're, if I'm not called to lead you, then you, why would I expect you to follow? Uh, so why would I bend cool. over backwards for you to for you to follow or for you to follow me so I can please you when all this is all we're doing is pleasing God. All we're here to do is give him the glory. All we're here to do. And so um, without that mindset, but it takes like you said, it takes a change in mind. It takes a change in mindset, a change in our language going from carnal to kingdom. My God, what yeah. kind of transition is that? And because we're all we're born into the natural carnality uh, or mindset of even being carnal minded. We're taught mm -hmm. where everything we're taught is, you know, unless somebody's around us, that's already kingdom. Even our language, what we say about ourselves, how we you know, we started off with this, how we talk about ourselves, what we say about ourselves. But did you ever believe that you were great from the beginning? Mm. Did you ever believe that God had um, so much had empowered you with so much authority and ability from the beginning? And so with that, you know, we get to the place that where uh, um, so Romans 12 says, be transformed. If you're going to be uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, it's going to start in our minds and it can move to our mouth. Wow. And it will reside in the meditations of our heart. Mary, Lord have mercy, being a virgin. 
And the angel come and say, you better have a baby. She said, what? Hold on. But the Bible says she meditated on those things in her heart. Yes. Even when she couldn't say anything, she was meditating on it. And sometimes we have to be able to receive what God has said. Just, I don't understand it. I don't know how this is going to happen. And it may put me in a place of um, people going to talk about me. It may put me in a place of, I don't understand. And, and why me? But at the same time, I know what he said to me. Mm. And rehearsing that what God has said, you know, rehearsing what he has said and beginning to rehearse it so much that it is, is planted, it's sown in our hearts. Wow. Just, let your word be in my heart that I won't sin against it. Mm -hmm. right? You can read it, you can quote it, but until you get that thing deep down, because that's what the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is going to pull on what's in you, God Almighty. He's going to pull mm -hmm. on what's in you to remind you so that we don't sin against it. Oh, wow. So it's got to be in you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got to be, be in you. And so that, that I mean, listen, this has come full circle. It brings us back to the to the hedge, to the circle. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people have to remind you. They have to remind us, wait a minute, this ain't you. This is not who you are. You're so much better than this. You wow. don't deserve this. You deserve better. Mm -hmm. And see, when we understand, then it gets to a place where we can walk in that. We can walk in understanding this is really not who I am. And so it changes your thought process. It changes, you know, who we are as a person, because then we have to understand and believe, wait a minute, God really called me to something greater. And, and this is, the, you know, I say sometimes when I'm preaching, y'all too low. Cause see, even in our thinking, when God is to yeah. God is not, He's not coming down to yeah. our level in the sense that He's always speaking to us to pull us to draw us to Him, mm -hmm. and He's higher. His thoughts are higher than ours. His ways are not our ways, and so He's constantly speaking to us. And so we have to be willing to let go of a carnal mindset, of a of a impoverished mindset, of of a um just even starving mindset, one that has been lacking for so long that we have to be able to believe that there is more and greater and more purpose in that and what God is saying. Mm, that's good. And if we don't, then it causes us to be stuck and we can be in a reprobate mind. It's like it, when God is saying, uh, okay, listen, God says, Peter, step out on the water. Come just one word, one uh, word from the Lord, one word, Peter walked on water. One word. Now, while everybody else in the boat looking, the mindset, man, he crazy. I ain't getting out there doing that. They it, mm. instead of saying, "Wait a minute, wait, wait, wait," I never seen anybody do this before. I believe that if Peter could do it, I could do it. Yeah, I believe that if he said that to him, I can do it. Now, not knowing the nature of the sound, but it had to be. It, it won't like he was whispering because Jesus was out there on the water. Y'all ain't saying that, but okay. So then, and and so everybody else in the boat, and see, some of us would rather stay in the boat than say, okay, I don't have to stay in the boat when my God is the God who uh, who commands Ooh. waters, who, who who created it, who formed it, who orders it. And so, if he said, "Come," then let me go, so I don't have to be sitting here on the boat. Looking strange, Come or looking on. around, or looking around like I don't know what's going on because uh -huh. we are people. We are people who, when God calls us forward, everything else lines up to what He's calling us to. Preach. That's good. The water, the water in its natural element. My God, the water became something. It's normal, normally in its natural element, you can't walk on water. True. That's so good. even every, everything, everything, nature, uh, the atmosphere, everything lined up to what Jesus had said to Peter. So everything, even even your enemy, even, everything has to line up. Everything Whoa. has to line up yeah. to what uh. God is calling you to. And sometimes I know it doesn't look like it's going to line up. I know it doesn't look like it's going to work. I know it doesn't. And listen, and I'm not saying that without experiencing that. I'm not saying, I know what I'm looking at right now. I know I'm in the dark. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And I'm still <laughs> <on>. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. But you know something you said, Pastor. You know what? This changes the game. You will never know what God is to you 
or who you are to God and what you're made of if you don't get out the boat. Right. If I hadn't did this, I wouldn't have knew I could do it. I could have just sit back and see. Uh, we have a tendency. I, I, let's use football, for example. Here we are. We sit at home and criticize coaches and players for not catching some. Right. I mean, I'm not in the game. I don't know the severity of what's going on at the time, but we can sit back. And, and judge other people and say, oh, why did he do that? Why did he go back? Why did he backslap? Why did he do this? You know, we, we get all these opinions, but we're not in the game myself. Right. But you know what Roosevelt said? I'm talking to the man who's in the arena of life, who's getting bloody, who's getting out of the boat, who, you know, who is testing life. And some people are afraid to get out of the boat, but they want to talk about everybody else. So it's time out for that. It, what do you want to do? I mean, what do you want to try? If you want to bake cupcakes, bake them. Bake them. If you want to be a doctor, do it. Whatever you want to do, but you got to get out the boat. Right. right. So that's to say, I'm, how important is it? I'm jacked up now. We might as well be here. I'm jacked up now. How important is it to just do it? I mean, the Nike commercial, just do it. Right, right. So how important it is, um, I, I think it's the level of obedience that we have to want to want to please God rather than man. Want to obey God rather than man. Wow. It's important because God doesn't even, he doesn't call us to anything without purpose in it. He wow. doesn't assign us without purpose. And not only that, but we're not even challenged or confronted with these things without God understanding. I, I know this is a challenge and I'm going to allow you to face the challenge, not by yourself. Mm. Right. So everything that God even allows us to experience, we, we miss the understanding that God has called us and he understands there's going to be challenges. Sometimes God will let the enemy loose on you. He will let the devil loose on you. And ask Job, ask Saul, ask Paul. He yes. will let the enemy loose on us loose. to ensure that we still fulfill purpose. And so, like I said, with God, we are with the majority. Maybe that's just for me tonight, but I'm grabbing that thing. I, I got some stuff that God has called me to and ain't nobody seeing it. <laughs> ain't Ooh. nobody seen it I said Lord have mercy where the prophets at who always want to give you a word uh, well, nobody seen it. but if God has spoken it shall he not make it good shall he not yes. do it and he's going to make it good and so what he what God understands about us is that even we that's the place where we have to trust him that's the place we have to rely on him and not rely on ourselves that's the place we got to build in God we got to understand that God if he brought us to it then he's going to allow and enable us to get through it and everything Lord I love you Jesus everything is not going to be for us to just move mountains and, and be on mountaintops he's got to give us valley experiences to understand there's going to be somebody else that hits the valley and you got to be able to pull them out. That is, that's how I got to be fire chosen. That's where we came from. God said in Isaiah 48 and 10, I've not, I've not refined you as silver. Lord have mercy. Ah, you ain't no shiny thing. Come on. He said, but I chose you in the furnace, in the fire. I chose Ooh. you in the furnace of your affliction. And yes. so that, that speaks to us. He chose us in everything that's wrong with us. Oh God, that God said, that's the place I'm going to use you. That's the place. I, that's why you fire chosen. That's the place I'm going to use you. That's in the furnace of your affliction. And so then God began to flip that thing for me, right? Everything that was wrong, everything that was wrong with me is the things that God can use me in. Mm. It's, it made me grit. <laughs> it made me tough. It gave me power. It let me know and see. So, okay. So I happen to be, I'm an orphan. So my dad died in a car accident. My mother was murdered. I, I have no brother, no sister, no cat, no dog, no husband, no son, no daughter. So God said, listen. And, and so he began to remind me, I trained you from a child how to walk alone. 
I was there okay. with you when you didn't have oh. nobody and I'm still here with you. So sometimes can I, oh Lord, can I just speak to Jennifer Rivers and, and, and Shirley Bland and tell them hallelujah. Sometimes glory to God, when you are walking alone, God said there will be moments in your life where you, I've, I've trained you for this. I've developed you for this. And so though you don't want to, though you still have to just do it and nike don't have enough power to give you to enable you to do it nike just tells you to do it but god said i'm telling you to do it and i'm going to give you the ability to do it Preach I'm going to give you the strength that you need to do it i'm going to yes. give you the anointing you need to do it and my spirit is with you my power oh god you talk about dunamis power when you think think about everything you have done up to this point and you feel everything you said i can't do that or and, and then, oh Lord, the the uh, the lady said, "My soul looks back and wonder how I got over." It was the enabling, dunamis power of God that wow. enabled us. So when God says, "I want you to do it," when God says, "Come," He everything lines up. Even your challenge lines up. And what mm. I love about God is that when, when Peter took his eyes, took his focus, and he started looking, see, some of us get distracted. Come on now. We, yes. distracted. we slide back. You feel good. I like that. It won't as hard. And so you said um, when you first came to the Lord and uh, everything was going to be fine. It's going to be hunky-dory and, and they, it's going to be a bed of roses. They didn't tell me that. And I'm so glad because they would have lied to me. But it's listen, God didn't say that. He didn't say you were going to be happy. He said you can be content. Yeah. Oh, you can be content. I'll give you peace. You can have joy. You listen, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom. He ain't say nothing about you being happy over. You might not like it. Look at Jeremiah. He had to put a yoke around his neck and walk around and tell the people they're gonna go uh -oh. into bondage, and they didn't even believe uh -oh. him. Ah, and so then when um when Peter looked at the waves, he got a little nervous and stuff. It's going to be things that make you nervous. Hallelujah. They're going to make you nervous, but don't get scared. Jesus is right there. And what I love about him, at least Peter, they talk about him. They talk about, they talk about him. He, he sank. At least he had enough sense. You might be sinking to call on Jesus. Yes. You might be going down, but have enough sense to call on the person. Lord have mercy. Uh, they, they don't catch the ball. Okay, fine. Now I'm an avid football uh, fan. I love football. Now, and, and so, um, but so I fuss. And you know why I fuss? Because they make too much money to be out there messing up. Lord have mercy. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. They make too much money to be out there they messing up. Money, they make too much money. They messing up. So, because when you're a professional, you get paid for that. Now, if this is flag football, you ain't getting no pay. Honey, you can miss the ball, do whatever. But when you make too much, much money, see, it's too much on the line. So I need to say to everybody, mm. listen, it's too much on the line for us to yeah, be out here fumbling. Oh, God, it's too much on, uh, for us on the line. And see, they, that we paid, Jesus paid this thing. Mm. So it's That's too good. much for us, and, and 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 don't get it twisted. I listen. I mess up. I jack some stuff up all I can. But God have to help me, so I ain't saying that I don't ever mess up, and anybody don't mess up. But at the same time, we ain't got to keep messing up in the same thing. Come on, that's good. And we don't have to oh. keep. We don't have to fall back into the self criticism. Well, you know, God knows my heart. The truth is, He does know our hearts, and so He knew you didn't mean it, and He knew you just were half hearted from the beginning. So He have to let us know. I let you fall, so you can let, so I can let you know I'm a solid rock that you can fall on. She preaching, sister. You I'm preaching. Solid, solid rock. He, he listen. He Saul prayed thr three times. Bob said thrice. King James said thrice. He prayed three times for the thorn to go away for God to take it away but the Bible said he sent the messenger of Satan God will send the messenger of Satan to let you know you ain't all that you ain't gonna make it and that's when you have to understand I'm still in a grace some of us hallelujah forget that we are in a grace period with God oh boy I love that we grace can period that energy see i'm gonna call them and tell them my power out y'all need to do something but we can be in a we in a grace period with god where we are relying on that grace we shouldn't abuse it but we are relying on that grace because we come short we come short every day every moment because we're not perfect and if we were perfect we wouldn't be here y'all ain't saying that he is coming back for his church he's coming back to get us but he's coming back for the people that when he say come on we can get up y'all ain't saying nothing when he, when he come back for us 
And so what the Lord has to do is put us in a place. He said, I let the messenger of Satan, I let the enemy work for me. Because if you want your foot through, it's going to be through your enemy. You want to get mm -hmm. hired. God to teach us. He got you got to learn how to eat at tables in the presence of your enemy. Where your enemy don't eat, they they yeah. wish you would choke on your food. So that means you got to learn how to chew right and swallow right and drink. Y'all ain't saying that. So you got to get the word, Hallelujah. So you can chew whether you you are chewing on on where you drinking milk or you chewing on meat. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And so then when you do that, when we do that, then it gets us to a place where no matter who's around, we understand. I'm may be standing out here on water in a place that I'm supposed to sink, but because the Lord told me I could do this, he is going to allow me to walk. Mm. You preaching. What I love, I love, I love, I love, I love, oh God, I can't, oh Lord have mercy. I love um, Carl how God does these things and he does yes. it in a way to where even the lame walk, people who have never, listen, this is my testimony, people who have never been exposed, God, I love you, been never been exposed to, to God. All I did on Sundays, me and my grandma sat on the porch and laughed and talked and, and, and just mm -hmm. did whatever we want, ate, it was Sunday, we ain't had nowhere to go. And, and my aunt would take me to church here or there when, you know, special events and stuff, not every week, but mm -hmm. even at a place where I didn't understand. And so I, I, I was in a place, hallelujah, to where I was at a place to where God, I got to church through trying to date a man. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Come on. The guy's mama said I had to come to church. That's how I got there. Not realizing that God orchestrated the thing. Hallelujah. <laughs> get in. Yes. To where I found, hallelujah, the lover of my soul and I lost the lover of my life. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Woo! And so it yeah, was. That, that's what I God does. And, and what I love about Jesus, so we read where he, he causes the lame to walk. And some of us have been in a place of being lame. Come on, when you're lame, you can't move. You, you can't move. You can't even move yourself. Mm. And some of us, so we were, I was lame in my knowledge and my exposure, lame in my relationship, lame in who I knew Jesus to be, lame in who I know God to be. But when he spoke to me, I, I could get up when he spoke to me and it doesn't matter. Glory to God. So that's just like um, we have uh, our nonprofit that we're building. Lord have mercy. It's called the Phoenix place. Just like the Phoenix, it goes down in flames, but it rises from the ashes. Mm. And so just like the phoenix place uh just like the lame people hallelujah just like the phoenix place everybody needs some help getting up everybody needs some help on their ride yeah. and god wants us to have the help we need and so so when nobody else could do it he came himself good god almighty I promise you, I'm not a woman. I'm not a farmer or, or I don't deal with a lot of agriculture. I don't have a lot of things that I can take to an altar. I'm not going to be messing with cows and doves. I ain't going to be turtle dove, anything. I ain't going to be messing with that stuff like that unless I have to. Now, I believe he'll enable me, but I ain't got to. Hallelujah. Excuse me. I do not have to. Praise the Lord. But listen, he um, <laughs> so what he did was do that in such a way that yeah. you don't have to look on everything else to give us the help to, that we need to not be lame anymore. He takes the excuse from us. Oh, wow. That and all good. we need is exposure. So for those of us who have been exposed, then it's, it's our responsibility to expose others to this great God who says you can move mountains. And wow. if you're the mountain, move yourself, die to your flesh, kill your flesh daily. If you have to defeat your self-esteem every day, if you have to put stickers of affirmation, the word all around your house, if you have to listen to the word, if you have to feed yourself and go to church and hear, and now you can't even get into the church. So now you got to get online and you got to make sure you're hearing the truth. My God. Yes. Say it. And then you get to a place that where now even you're doing something that you never knew how to do. See, it's amazing because the lame people have seen others walk, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about what it takes from. So there's this mind and all in a, in a moment of God's infinite wisdom. There's this mind transfer. The, the, the mind has to speak to the nerves. How did the mind know to do that? Y'all ain't saying that to me. <laughs> That's how true. do you know? Uh, so, yeah. so 
just not knowing the word, but letting the word work in us. Oh my God. Letting the word work in us in such a way that everything begins to respond. Mm. The lame get up and walk because God does that. Yes. He speaks that. But then there's got to be God just not only speaks to our spirit. So then in his word, it speaks to your whole man. Mm, the brain true. begins to send messages to the nerves. The nerves begin to send messages to the rest of the body, telling the legs, the ankles, the, the, the muscles to strengthen. Come on, because if you're lame, then your muscles have atrophied. Come on now. Mm -hmm. And if you never walk, then how do you learn how to walk in a moment, in an instant? Yes. How do you just automatically know, except there be some kingdom transference for your transformation to go from lame to walking. Okay, so what you're yeah. saying, Sam, I ain't lame. Uh, uh, listen, I'm saying that when God, when we are in a place of hearing and God is constantly in a place of speaking, then what begins to happen is that God begins to also transfer and transform us. Mm. And our physical man, our emotional man, our mental part of us begins to respond to the spirit. Wow. To where we don't have to stay in the place where he found us. Mm. We don't it. have to stay in the place where they said. Oh, we, did you get that? Wow. We don't have to stay in the stuck place or in a sunken place you can get up glory to god you can get up not only can you move but every mountain you come to can move mm. that's and awesome if, if god says we're not gonna move this one see that's why we gotta hear real carefully because god said we're not gonna move this one i'm gonna make your feet like hind's feet so you can climb it so you can walk in high places. I'm going to give you strength to step over it. I'm going to give you strength to walk on things that's supposed to kill you. Come on. If you tread on serpents and adders, you're going to be able to walk on things that's supposed to kill you. Mm. And even when it bites you, come on, Paul, even when the bite oh. bites you, come on, we don't have the sting of hurt in our life. We don't have the sting of pain. We don't have the sting of, of oh God, um, rebellion. We don't have the sting of uh, somebody betrayal. Oh my God, betraying you. And you feel like I can't go from here. Lord have mercy. Some, some people get stuck. God want to bless you. He want to do something for you. But because the, what the last person did, you can't even move forward. The devil is lying to somebody and you choose to believe it. But I'm trying my best to tell us that we don't have to keep believing the lies of the devil. You don't. Everything huh. he said. And see, here's the thing. Now I'm going to be true. Some stuff he said about me is true. I'm not perfect. I do mess up. Yes. I do get in trouble. We all I do. I have some thoughts that I shouldn't have. But even at that, I have a God mm -hmm. who says, girl, I got something for it. Come I on, can man. God's not yeah. scared of our issues. Woo! Oh, boy. He's, He's not, not scared of our issues. He's not. He's not. Jesus was saying, He's not scared of our issues. Mm -hmm. Actually, he came because of our issues. <laughs> oh, boy. You ever seen a parent, you know, your child in trouble and they say, let me go get this child. Let mm -hmm. me go. Or somebody just uh, friends jump in the jump in the pool. And they know they not a good swimmer. They on the wrong end. You said, let me go out here and get them. They can't swim. Or you seen somebody embarrassing themselves. I've had friends. Come on. I'm usually that other friend just, you know, doing karaoke or something. And let me go up here and get them. Come on. Sit down. You can't oh, sing yeah. like that. Please <laughs> do us a favor. You go over here. You just clap do real hard. A favor. Yes. I believe. And so we have to. But see, we, we don't understand the nature of God and who yeah. he is. And so mm -hmm. that is why that that love and, and the, the courage that God has to impart to us, to believe him, even when we are lost, even when we sh are struggling, even with our issues. And so that's where uh, our hedge comes into place. Our circle comes into play um, because we need a circle that can bring us to even when we're most vulnerable. And I, I can ask anybody, who can you call and tell your worst secret to? Yes. And tell your worst challenge to the thing that that. You know, if if anybody found this out, everybody would be done with you. Mm -hmm. The thing that makes you want to give up on yourself. Who can you call and know that you can just tell them that and they will still embrace you 
and love. And the challenge is a lot of times there's nobody in our circle who, who we could do that. And so we only have Jesus. But if you haven't been exposed to Jesus, oh, if, if you haven't been uh, introduced to Jesus. So that's where you see a lot of people hurting because they don't know there's a way out. Oh, God. That is a way out, man. They don't know that there's a way that's above us. That's that's above that. They don't know that it doesn't have to be like this. Mm -hmm. They don't know. And because, you know, so the Bible tells us to be wise as serpents, to be harmless as doves. So you got to understand even the strategy of your enemy and how it works. Even even for us who know when you feel like, okay, something a lot of things is going on. The first thing we want to do is isolate. Oh, yes. Yeah, for, I, you know, and it's different if you trying to get by yourself to be with God. But even when you get by yourself and you're not listening to God or not putting your place or or praying or meditating or just reading his word or just trying to seek him for understanding. But the enemy wants to isolate you because he knows if you ever hear you can live. Oh, yes. Yes. My grandma oh. used to say if you my grandma used to say this, you can huh, you can hear. When she called our name. That's true. Right. That's and awesome. so from that, God said to me, if you can hear, you can live. You can live. If as you long can as you can hear, you can live. That's yes. awesome. That's awesome. Pastor, let me let me ask you. Uh, I was thinking when you were talking, I said, uh, everything that I went through, I lived through. It didn't mm -hmm. kill me. Everything that, you know, it, I'm going to die from this or mm -hmm. something going to happen to me bad. You you know what? I live through it. Right. Everybody on this, on this call tonight, on, on this Facebook live, I know you have heard something say, you know what? You ain't going to make it out of this, but you did. Right. You know, because you heard something. So how important is it? We got to put, put ourselves around good stuff because faith right. comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes. So if anything is speaking contrary to that, you in wrong, you in the wrong company. You know, if somebody's telling you you're not gonna make it, you're gonna die, you know, you can't start a business, you'll never get married again, you'll never do this again. You are in wrong company. Yes. Uh-uh, you in the, you're not in the right company. You talking and, girl. I mean, just to, you know, and <laughs> You were talking about Paul. I'm, I'm just saying, I like to leap out my seat because what other man could say this? For me to live is Christ. For me to die is gain. But you know what? Maybe I'll stay here for your account. It was almost like this man knew God so much in his faith that he could either choose to live or choose to die. How powerful is that? That you have that power. You know what, God, I think I'll stay around a little bit longer because there's some more people that need to be saved. Right. There's right. some more people whose mind need to be changed. I need to be here. That's how important we are to God. Yes. So, Pastor, as we close out, I'm going to let you close us out. Okay. Look, all right, listen. We're going to have, listen, you blanked out on me, right? This is what I normally do for guests when they on fire like this. Oh, Lord. If, a, if we if you can, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a check with you. But after next month, I want to Pastor Sam one more night. Okay. 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 Because you blanked out, and and because of what what happened over there, that wasn't your fault. So I want to bring you on one more night. Okay. Uh, in October, after October, all the guests have done. We're gonna bring you on for one more night. And me and you, you we'll straighten that out, okay? Okay. Sounds you good. come back. All I will. Right? I will. You can I will. come back. So, Pastor Sam, in your own way, I want you to speak to the people tonight because I realize right now some people are looking forward to 21 already because they feel like this year is a bust. You know, we had COVID. I lost my job. And, you know, everything. I lost loved ones. I lost, you know, so much has happened. And, and I feel for you. I, I've lost some things in the fire, too. But but this year is not over. Mm -hmm. David asked God, should I pursue? Whoa. And, pursue and you shall recover all. Some of you right now, you don't have to wait to 21 to recover. Mm -hmm. You can recover this year. Yes. But you 
got to speak the right language. If you check out now, you may not recover. So Pastor Sam, we've been talking so much about speaking the right things, being around the right company and all of this. <clears throat> you know, guys, you got to finish strong. So Pastor Sam, in your own way, speak to us tonight. What, what do we have to do? What can we do? It, you know, to finish this year off strong, we're in the last quarter of this year, and, and there's so much that still can be done, but we need something. We need Jesus more than we need him. Come on, help us out tonight as you close. Thank you, Jesus. So <clears throat> I will join you again another time. Get that straight uh, for us. And um, what I can say, and as you were talking, what came um, before I said that, thank you for let me come back on. OK. Um, but what came to mind was this, because we are in this present moment and um, this year, God gave me one word and that was to overcome. You know, I didn't have anything going to have plenty in 2020. I didn't have, you know, and, and we have plenty. In yeah. 2020. But God said overcome. And so what I what I've been able to understand about that word uh, that he gave me uh, to continue to preach, to continue to minister um, now more so than everything, that it's important that we understand that we can overcome. Right. So uh, in Romans 8, 18, it says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time yeah. are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us. He goes on, uh, Apostle Paul is speaking to the church at Rome. He goes on to say, and we know, verse 28, that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Okay, so everybody doesn't nec haven't necessarily developed that love, but glory to God, we're all called. Even if you claim them or not, you're still called. And so as you understand that calling, then you understand his love to continue to give you a grace. And so what I would say, uh, we are still in 2020. So you got to recognize where you are. Uh, this sufferings of this present time, even um, not, it's not even worthy. What God is doing is so much greater than COVID. It's so much greater than layoffs. It's so much greater. Uh, some people, I worked a job and uh, one time and they shut the meal down. And when they closed the meal down, I had only been there a few days, a few months. And so I wouldn't have um, received any retirement, anything. But when they closed it down, some people were sad. They had been there all their lives. And I said, God, I thank you because he didn't mean for me to be there all my life. And so there, this is a time and a season where God is shutting some stuff down. He's closing wow. things off. And so we have to understand when God does that, it's still a win-win situation. It's not going to be compared to the glory that he's going to bring in my life. God still is going to do some things. Even when I'm at the end of myself, I'm at the end of my job, I'm at the end of my money, but God is still able. He is El Shaddai. And so yeah. we understand that we're in a season where this is where you see the dunamis of God, the wonder working power of God, because now yeah. can nobody but God do it. Oh God, can't nobody but God get you through this. Can't nobody but God help you. And and then, so you're seeing miracles. I can't afford the medicine, so he got to heal me. <laughs> there is no cure, so he got to heal me. I got to believe him beyond. I don't see how the money's going to make it, how and make it to the end. So he's got to provide for me. Now I'm relying on him to be who he is. And so God says, now you know me. Now you're learning me. Now, like, like you said, Paul said, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Either way, I'm going to win. Oh, God. I, win. I, wish people oh. Who were, I wish the believer will understand. Either way, you're going to win. You can you persevere. Win. You can talk about me. Either way, it's all good because it's all God. Either way, God is with me. Either way, God has his hand on my life and I put my life in his hands. I don't know what tomorrow's going to hold, but he's taking care of it. And if he's allowed yeah. me to see it, then guess what? He's going to provide for that too. He's the God. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So why are we fretting? I'm not even going to fret over evildoers because he's going to cut them off. And it's not going to yeah. be a long time. It's going to be soon. And what I understand, I'm believing in him. And, and I know. See, that's the thing. That's where it all comes together. What you know. It's not only what you know, but it's who you know. Ooh, I don't yeah. know God in the fullness of who he is, but he's everything I need him to be. And then some, because my mind is finite. Our minds are finite. So somebody needs to understand 2020. No, this is not what we anticipated at all. 
This is not, not what we wanted. This is not what we planned. But when you when you put your life and amazingly, the world is still turning. Lord have mercy. The world is still rotating on its axis. Y'all ain't saying that. Okay, y'all quiet tonight. All right. I'm I'm just <laughs> hallelujah. So oh, there's a God of greater. The world didn't stop spinning because COVID-19. People are getting exposed. People are dying of COVID-19, but there are people who are living of COVID-19. Yeah. I'm convinced. I think last year, I, from the symptoms and what they describe, I think I had it. And so what I un came to understand about God, he healed me from something that the doctors didn't even have a name for. God Almighty, God delivering. See, that's what you say. He protects us from danger, seen and unseen. For all we know, that some of us needed to be in the house. Some of us needed to get some uh -huh. to have some stuff shut down. To have some things come to a stop. To have to learn a different skill. To have to learn. Listen, I had to learn real quick how to hook up this technology. I'm not a high tech person, but can you see me? Can you hear me? Is it I working? Hear you. And so in a win-win situation where God is still, our oh Lord, have mercy. Paul says it this way. Thanks be unto God, oh glory, who always causes us to triumph through Christ Jesus, no matter what you are facing, man or woman of God, man or woman who needs Jesus, hallelujah. You still have an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. You still have a time where yes. you can turn your heart over and know yes. it's not going to be perfect. But tell me what has been perfect, my God. God, tell me, come on. Some people was shouting out of 2019 because they were tired of that. <laughs> they were tired yes. of 2019. Yeah. Come on. And every year you've been so ready to get to the next year. But can you just handle your now with Jesus? Mm. Can you handle your now with God and say, God, I realize 2020 ain't worked out for me like I want it, but it's still working for me. Lord have it's mercy. It's still working. Come on. I received like that. I want it, yes. but it's still working for me. It may not be working out, but it's working for you. Lord it's working me. for me. Whew, I I that. That. This thing is working for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know how. But so then, but when you partner with God, when you say, God, I'm in this with you. When you work with him, it'll work for you. Yes. And it doesn't matter. And I know. So so let me speak to there are some who have had tremendous loss. Mm. And I, we are not insensitive to that. We have yeah. had tremendous loss. Absolutely. We have have tremendous pain. And there are those who are grieving and not able to, you know, share and fellowship and and miss just being in the fellowship. But at the same time. Yes. We've got to understand that even in the midst of tremendous loss, there is still one who can restore everything. Everything. That's Job. He gave him back double. And God was the one who set it up. Y'all ain't saying nothing. God is the one who set his, the earth, hallelujah, is his footstool. <laughs> God said he sit on the circle of the earth and his foot and it, the, it sit on the circle of the earth and the earth is his footstool. He sits uh -huh. on it and, and he has full dominion. Full Ooh. dominion. Full authority. Not only is it his domain, but it is his dominion. He has authority and a place to have authority over. And if we as people of God, so we can say, God, you have you have dominion over 2020. You dominion. are a sovereign God. I Ooh. know I've lost a lot of things, but right here, right now, right here, right now, I need you, God, to continue to yes. be with me and help me when I've lost everything. You are able. See, that's where we go back to that speaking God. One word from God will create One. your future. One word from God creates your tomorrow. One mercy from God wakes you up every day. And so we thank God that he doesn't retire our mercy and he gives us a brand new one every day yes and so Ooh. i say if i suffer today because here's the thing if we don't want to suffer we don't want to go through but suffering is the only thing that righteously connects us to jesus christ mm. out of wow. all of our relationship if we don't suffer we will never reign yes we will Good. never right. walk in, and, and see the things that we suffer and overcome. Thank you, Lord. See, when we overcome, when we understand this suffering I'm going through right now, oh, the, the glory, God about to do something. He about to set something up because he got to bring me through. 
He got mm. to bring me out. And see, instead of getting focused on, on the place of suffering, we need to get focused on the Savior. My God. Mm -hmm. We need to get focused on the Savior who, who is Savior over suffering. Come on. One word. That's awesome. Death don't even have a sting. The grave don't have a victory. Y'all ain't saying that all because right. Jesus suffered. Oh, my God. <laughs> and if you don't have anything, you have a word, hallelujah, from God, from um, Carl Claiborne in agreement with Sam Robinson saying you will overcome. And not mm -hmm. it ain't going to take you long because you can be, Lord, you can be in prison and still be free. You can be in bonds and still have liberty. That's right. Oh. And so we will overcome. We will we will be brought through. And it may be through suffering, but it's also going to be through a savior who loves us so much that if he if he has to allow us to hurt, if he has to allow us to lose, we're still going to gain. It's not about yeah. oh, her mercy. Okay, it's not about what happens. Uh so we got one more quarter coming. Yes. It right? is. We got one more quarter coming. When the last, we got one more quarter. You can win this quarter. So you, you can, that, your mindset. I lost everything all this year, but this this time, hold on. When October, I can start right now. I'm about to win. I'm going to do better. This is going to be greater for me. So even understand it. Speak this thing out of your mouth. I, I listen. I done lost my. I, I done lost it from January to September. But October, right. God going to help me get it together. God is going to do something in me that I never expected. He's going to do something through me that I never anticipated. And it's going to be good because his yeah. plan for me is a plan. It's, it's good and not evil. His plan for you is good and not evil is one of peace and not evil is going to bring you to an expected end. God's got somewhere for you to go. And it's up to you to decide if you're going to get there. Yes, that is so. Uh, I submit that you make a decision. Tonight. 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 That's the same. Yes. Sir. Fire. Thank you so much. I received so much. I was just over here just writing and just trying to keep up. But uh, one thing, <laughs> I, I'm just trying, you know, something you said, I, you know, I don't want to get you cranked up again, but I got to say this. <laughs> and you know how, you know, you said this. And I, I used to tell my wife this, you know, people come on and, you know, this is the year. You get all your cattle. This is the year you get your house. You get your boo. You get this is the year. But nobody tells you this is the year or this was going to be the year where disaster comes when you lost your job. Nobody, because they don't want to tell people that. But see, God knew he had the evidence. Nothing caught him by surprise. Right. I'm sorry to say it. Nothing caught God by surprise. You know, and some of us had all, I know I had all these expectations for 2020, but you know what? Most games are won in the fourth quarter. Do your research. So you know what? It, it ain't over till it's over. Right. The fourth quarter, you still can win. Did you hear Pastor Sam? Did you hear? Come on, guys. Most games do your homework are won in the fourth quarter. Most games are won with Three seconds left on the clock. Ask Kobe, and he's gone now. But he has won so many games with three seconds on the clock. So, guys, you got three months, and God is going to do something with it. Pastor Sam, yes, sir. This has been incredible. I must tell you, this has been incredible. And uh, we're going to fix this up at the end. At the end of next month. At whenever you yeah, come back. One night and one night only. Pastor Sam Robinson. Okay. Guys, thank y'all so much for hanging in there. Pastor Sam, everybody hung in there with us. They did. And, uh, yeah. Fourth quarter, we will win. I dare you type that in. Fourth quarter. Fourth quarter, we will win. Fourth quarter. And call. We are going to win. You don't have to wait for 21 to win. You can win in the fourth quarter. Carl. Yes. And um, with that, just like um, it's different. Some people expect, expect the right team to win. With God, it don't even matter which team you're playing on. Oh. <laughs> don't matter. It don't, did you hear that? It don't it does matter. not matter which team you are on. When you are with God, you will win. That's what I'm talking about. Miss Shirley Bland, 
fourth quarter victory. Yes. That's right. Jennifer Rivers, we will win in the fourth quarter. Well, I'm saying that sounds so powerful. And you know what? Most teams, they are looking up at the clock, and in three minutes is a long time. Mm -hmm. So three months is really a long time, guys, but you got to see it that way. You got to see, you know what? I got time to win. You got to see it, though. Fourth quarter, guys. Thank you so much for that. Win. We are. I'm telling you, we are winners. I, we got a bunch of winners on this on this live, man. Fourth quarter, we win. That's it. We gonna win, Pastor Sam. I will talk to you in the back office. Hey, guys, it's been a good night. But I am persuaded, as I always say before we leave, that God intended, not maybe, but He intended for you to have a great life, a good life, whatever you want to say. So, guys, don't settle for less when you can have God's best. Amen. Talk to you next time. We'll see you next week. Same channel, but different guests. Pastor Sam, I got a friend for life here now, guys. Absolutely. Well, she's on a mission. We'll talk to you soon. That's right. We win fourth quarter. God bless you guys. I think we are...